Tonight, funding the future. Local community groups share in a $100,000 sponsorship program. And the Crows women's team touches down in Port Lincoln on the hunt for the next generation of footy stars. This is Southern Cross News with Fraser Goldsworthy. Good evening. First tonight, police are praising the actions of a man who went missing while hiking on a popular Flinders Ranges track near Corn. A friend reported the man missing around 9.30 last night. Luckily, the man had phone reception and was able to describe his location to officers before they conducted a search of the area with SES volunteers. The man who'd suffered an ankle injury was then located at around 1.45 this morning at the top of Devil's Peak. Police are urging anyone who hikes in the outback to be well-dressed and prepared, and if they're lost at night, to stay in one place. A number of organisations in Wyala have shared in nearly $100,000 worth of funding through a local bank's community reward program. The bank says with an increasing number of people becoming time poor, the program aims to help groups secure vital funds to continue their work. Tough economic conditions in Wyala have hurt non-for-profit groups, which have struggled to secure community sponsorship. We recognise that at this day and age, you know, fundraising is getting more difficult. The, the money supply just isn't there. Beyond Bank runs a community reward bonus program. Members open a community reward account and choose to support a local organisation. After calculating the average balance of each account, a percentage goes back to each registered local organisation. The football club that uh, got a bonus of 1200 well imagine trying to raise that in, in barbecues and we call it snag free fundraising. Wireless Road Safety Centre also secured a $5,000 community grant. All run by volunteers and that's really what makes the community is the uh, volunteers who get out there and do it, do the hard yards. Cancer support group Pink Spirit secured a bonus of $9,000, making them one of the state's top performers. Recipients say they're incredibly grateful for the support. You just never know where the next donation is coming from, but we are so lucky, we really are. John Hunt, Southern Cross News. Mid-North locals are being urged to take part in an important information day on the National Disability Insurance Scheme. Organisers say it'll aim to educate those with a disability as well as families and carers on benefits that can be accessed through the scheme. Providing a helping hand to locals with a disability. An information session on National Disability Insurance Scheme is on its way to the Northern Festival Centre. What is the, the system? How can we uh, access it? Who can, be ac who can access it? How much money they'll be able to get? Can provide the best outcome for you or family members that need to be provided for. Individuals attending the sessions will be able to gather information on accessing personalised care in order to improve their quality of life. Find out more information and better information to help them know which place to go for them. One forum of particular interest to local NDIS recipient Tracy Lawson will be on improving mobility. Uh, accessing um, mobility equipment like the scooter that I'm on now and my wheelchairs and changing tyres and tubes on a regular basis. It's hoped the NDIS will also have benefits for the wider community where it's hoped employment opportunities will arise. The NDIS is going to create the opportunity for hundreds of jobs in the York and Mid-North area and uh, there's a great opportunity here for, the, uh, for people who want to go into the disability sector, into the aged care sector. Everyone is being encouraged to attend the session tomorrow. Another will be held in Clare on Friday. Rachel Nell, Southern Cross News. Pigeons in Port Lincoln are yet again causing a stir for the town. Business owners say feral bird numbers are on the rise and now council has identified serious health concerns. These birds may look harmless, but they pose serious health risks to the public. Feral pigeons are a common sight in Port Lincoln, but local businesses have had enough. There's been a lot of pigeons hanging and they just stay here all the time and it's forever, just a mess on the ground and they're just a nuisance really. Karen works at headquarters on Tasman Terrace, a popular road during the lunchtime rush. There's a lot of diseases and everything else within the pigeons. Obviously when you've got food and all the rest of it, it's, it's 
Yeah, it's, it's quite messy. The feral bird population is thriving thanks to a constant food source, the grain silos. But the mayor says council is now actively looking at new ways to solving the problem. Past measures haven't proved to be all that successful, so we really do need to, to apply new thinking to this and new technologies. Those measures include preventing nesting as well as bird-proofing buildings. We've actually got a net that we can shoot out and, and cover a flock of pigeons. The council's also working closely with businesses to mitigate health risks. We need to pay attention to it and to reduce the numbers to a, to a reasonable level. They need to do something about it very shortly. Jason Kemp, Southern Cross News. Do stay with us. Still to come in tonight's local news, Premiership stars from the Crows women's team swoop into Port Lincoln. That's next. <laughs> Welcome back. Police are investigating a break-in at a lawn bowls club in Jamestown. Officers say on the 9th of September a number of people broke into the greens and threw metal support poles onto the turf, causing tears as well as dents along the surface. The club rooms were left untouched during the incident. Police are urging anyone with information to contact Crime Stoppers. A group of Year 12 students in Port Augusta is preparing to face a night in the cold. The Caritas College students will take part in a community sleepout in order to raise awareness about the issue of homelessness, something an increasing number of Australians is facing every night. At one of the busiest and most important times of their lives, these Year 12 students aren't just thinking of themselves. They're preparing to sleep outside in the hope of raising awareness that homelessness exists. And I think it's a great way for the school to give back. I think all the kids here are pretty lucky with their situations. So it would be our way of giving back to the community and raising awareness for those who aren't so lucky. The group says while it's a common thing in the cities, out in the regions the issue is often swept under the rug. I've noticed that there really isn't that big of a topic within especially our local town. So we do really need to get the word out there and help those people who are on the streets. These thin mats will be their beds for a night. I think it will be very different for a lot of us because, well for me, I've never been camping so it's it will be very different. It will be gobsmacking for some. After sleeping out in the elements, they've chosen to come to school for a full, normal day. They also wanted to make sure that they come to school the next day so they can experience what it's like to function on limited sleep. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how it goes because it's the first one we've done. So. The students hope that by having no home for the night and broken sleep, they'll highlight how important it is to tackle the issue in all areas. So that's going to be quite a bit of a struggle for some students because not many people obviously are used to such sleeping conditions. So yeah, it's going to be quite difficult to remain focused throughout the day. Amelia Simpson, Southern Cross News. The Upper Spencer Gulf is set to play host to a conference which will focus on the disruption to regional economies. Organisers say it's the perfect location as the area has plenty of experience in just that. The cities of Wyla, Port Augusta and Port Perry certainly aren't strangers to economic disruption. Our economies have been forced to change as globalisation and new government policy threaten their competitiveness. There was a lot of change and a lot of um, uh, sense of disruption within the community, uh, a lot of uncertainty. The Upper Spencer Gulf will host a SEGRA conference next month, which focuses on regional issues. This year's theme is Disruption, a Catalyst for Change, which will concentrate on how communities have responded to changes in the regions. The Upper Spencer Gulf has got examples of that in truckloads, but um, how, did they, how did they achieve that? What are the issues to do um, with attracting investment? As the rest of regional Australia also changes the way they do business, Ms Charters says it's an important time to share success. While each region has its own challenges, it's hoped the event will develop the principles on how they can all adapt. What might be the right investment um, a combination or package what uh, might be the legislative framework that works best, uh, how does this relate to policy? John Hunt, Southern Cross News. Well, Premiership stars from the Crows women's team have paid Port Lincoln a visit. Chelsea Randall and Anne Hatchard led 100 girls from surrounding schools in the Women's Crows Cup. Jason Kemp was there. Swapping the football for a whistle. Crows Premiership players Chelsea Randall and Anne Hatchard today experienced the game from a different angle. 
The pair are hosting a girls football tournament in Port Lincoln, which they hope inspires a new generation. It's going to be a new stepping stone and we'll see some of these girls playing in a competition, hopefully in a, their own youth girls comp. Ten schools from across the region have travelled to play in the Crows Cup, some coming as far as Roxby Downs. Regional players now are kicked closer to the big leagues. There is a pathway and that they can go through you know, the Norwood Football Club and then hopefully um, you know, into the Adelaide Crows system. Anne Hatchard is a shining example, drafted from the State Women's League before she was catapulted into the AFL. Suddenly there's this big AFLW league and winning the Premiership too has just been so crazy and now we're out here at Port Lincoln inspiring young girls to play football. While the Crows players are here helping young women chase their dreams, they're also thinking about the men, hoping they can achieve the same Premiership success. Jeez, it's, it's just that nerve-wracking kind of time. Uh, look, Friday night's game will be a really exciting one and I know that they're just focused on um, getting the job done. Jason Kemp, Southern Cross News. When we return after the break, new stats reveal Port Lincoln gamblers are spending less on poker machines. Details on that next. Welcome back. Port Perry Council is advising residents of the importance of adhering to alcohol-free zones across the city. It comes as the council announced dry zones that have been in place for decades will now become permanent. They're designed to reduce antisocial behaviour and violence across Port Pirie, and now they're here to stay. The dry zones have been in place for, for more than 20 years, um, but now they're in place permanently. It'll apply to current dry zones located in the CBD, in Memorial Park, Flinders View Park and along the foreshore. With the summer, summer approaching, um, that it's not a good idea to drink in the... Uh, or to have alcohol in the, in the CBD or boat ramp and beach areas. Adding to that, a new dry zone is now in place near Fisherman's Jetty in order to reduce trespassing. In along the wharf to, to the gate uh, that stops people going in front of the silos. Local police say they've recently caught multiple people drinking in alcohol-free areas while walking along Alexander Street. Police are asking that uh, nobody take uh, alcohol from one venue to, to another. Uh, it's been a, um, a, a bit of an issue for us. A warning from council that those caught drinking or carrying alcohol in the zones will be fined. Don't, don't get caught drinking in those areas. Don't, don't spoil the fun. Rachel Nell, Southern Cross News. New figures show gamblers in Port Lincoln are spending less on poker machines. A new study by the Adelaide University found the annual spend on gaming machines in hotels has fallen to a 10-year low. During last year, the average adult gambled $774, down from $816 the year before. The stats also found a shift in popularity from traditional gambling to online betting services. Port Lincoln has the fifth highest level of spending on poker machines in the state, behind Port Augusta and Wyala. A basketball program aimed at getting players with disabilities onto the court has held its grand final. In its second year, organisers say the program is doing wonders for the participants' skills and their confidence. It's a game where anyone and everyone can shoot hoops. Starting as a trial program last year, Inclusive Basketball held its finals last night with a record number of players who had even more passion for the game. It's been a brilliant season for Inclusive Basketball. I'm really excited to have the seniors on board this year and the seniors program has just exploded really. We started with 10 reluctant seniors on the court and their skills have progressed, now they really own the court and they love it out here. Growing from just 13 players in a trial last year, the All Abilities program has seen that figure more than double, with 30 players now on the courts each week. Local MP Dan Van Holst Pelican joined in on the action from dribbling to scoring goals. The sportsmanship is clear. Well, everybody um, is really helpful in that. They, um, um, I also told them that they're, they're, uh, they're all winners and that. Nobody loses the game and that. They're all winners and that's what it's all about, having fun. The program closed out with a medal presentation, but it wasn't the only mark of success for participants. It helps you improve your skills and the acting 
and just enjoy it. One player compares the competition to his love of trains. It's where engines compete to see who is the strongest, who are the fastest, who is decorated, who has shunting skills. And the best thing? Um, win some goals. The team say they're already looking forward to a bumper season next year. I'm glad everybody's had a lot of fun during the year and laugh, have laughs and stuff like that. Yeah, it's a... I'm looking forward to 2018. Amelia Simpson, Southern Cross News. Well, our region's fuel prices are a mixed bag this week with a number of price rises and falls. But those travelling to Adelaide will see a hit to the hip pocket. Here's John with Fuel Watch. It's been a varied week for consumers across the region with prices spiking, but also falling in some areas while others remain the same. Let's have a look at Unleaded first. Port Lincoln has seen a rise of over half a cent a litre this week as its prices continue north. Wyler and Port Perry are around the $1.25 mark for the second consecutive week. Port Augusta's consumers are the big winners this week, with prices down by over a cent a litre. Cadena's prices are up by 0.6 cents a litre, while Broken Hill has had a minor decrease. The big losers this week, however, are Adelaide, with the average price rising by a whopping 25 cents in the last week, so watch out there. Let's turn to diesel now, and Port Augusta's diesel consumers have had a good week, with their average price dropping by 1.1 cents. Kadena was slightly down, while Broken Hill consumers will pay an extra 0.7 cents on average. As for Adelaide, their prices are now over $1.21, up half a cent from last week. Now remember these prices are based on a regional average and don't reflect one particular outlet. And if you happen to spot a cheaper unleaded or diesel fuel price, let us know on our Facebook page. Stay with us after the break. Nicole, who joins us now, will have a check of the local weather. Yes, that's right, Fraser. A mostly fine week, but things could change by the weekend. Welcome back to the weather now. Another lovely fine day across the region. Hitting 29 in Port Augusta and only slightly cooler for 27 in Wyala. A bit of cloud about in Port Lincoln, otherwise a fine day for 24. 26 the top in Port Piri and a bit cooler in Adelaide for 23 degrees. To the satellite now, a bit of cloud over the south of the state, otherwise skies are looking clear elsewhere under a dry air mass. On the Gulf waters, winds up to 20 knots with seas at 1 to 1.5 metres. Sunrise just before quarter past 6, sunset at 6.14. Looking ahead, we're in for another warm one right across the region tomorrow, hitting 29 degrees in Port Augusta and Broken Hill, seeing the minimum start to really climb with a low of 11 in Wyala before reaching 26, a bit cooler in Port Lincoln for 20 and heading for a top of 21 in Adelaide. To the next few days, relatively warm weather on the way, but it won't be for long. Showers to start the weekend in Port Lincoln, dipping down to 19 on Saturday. Similar conditions expected in Cleve and Woodena. Wrapping up a warm week with a bit of rain for 22 on Saturday. Staying nice and fine over the next few days in Wyala. Plenty of sunshine in Port Augusta, reaching 34 to finish the working week. The odd shower about to start the weekend in Kadena. And Port Pirie is in for similar conditions with clear skies Friday. A weekend to stay indoors in Clare with showers on the way and still warm in Broken Hill for a top of 32 degrees on Saturday. So Fraser, mostly fine for the rest of the week, but looking like that could all change on the weekend. Be sure to have umbrellas at the ready. Thanks, Nicole. And that's Southern Cross News for this Wednesday. Thanks for your company. Don't forget, you can stay up to date on Facebook and Twitter. You can also drop us an email on any stories you'd like us to cover and feedback as well. I'll have updates a little later, but until then, enjoy your evening. Good night.